from the news team that stands for you. This is CBS Local 2 News at 5.30. And countries overseas are actually doing something about this because they pay for the health care of their people. A common household item is put to the test. CBS Local 2 stands for you is a danger disguised as a safety device for your loved ones. Good evening. Welcome to CBS Local 2 News at 530 and streaming live on CBSLocal2.com. I'm Brooke Ferry. And I'm Chris Long. Hope your week's off to a great start. CBS Local 2 stands for you and your children's safety tonight. Millions of Americans plug in baby monitors to keep an eye and an ear on their children when they're not in the room. I do it as well. It's an effort to keep your most precious loved ones safe. But as we found out, wireless baby monitors are a lot like cell phones, something that people really can't live without nowadays, but might not be as safe as you think. Pick up the phone, take advantage of the Wi-Fi. Technological comforts we don't think about twice. They're as much a part of Crystal Yokimkis' routine as putting her baby girl, Charlie, down for a nap. Tell me good night night, okay? Look up at the stars. Can you look up? Yeah, look up. And switching on the baby monitor. Yeah, I can't live without it. I take it everywhere. Just as more people are questioning the safety of keeping cell phones close to their bodies, more mothers are asking if keeping these wireless baby monitors close to their children's cribs and their own bedsides while sleeping is a good idea. Put her in the packing plate and I put it literally right next to her face. Unscientific experiments by moms on Facebook show flowers wilting next to baby monitors as if the electromagnetic frequencies, or EMFs, are zapping the buds of all life. And while that may only be anecdotal, it is alarming. So the helicopter sound is the typical sound that you have with a Wi-Fi enabled router. So that's how I know that a router is present in a home. Warren Miller is one of very few certified building biology environmental consultants in the country. He offered to use a radio frequency detector to check Crystal's baby monitor, as well as some other frequently used wireless devices in her Cathedral City home. We started with the Wi-Fi router, which is always on. And we're measuring in the neighborhood of 40 to 50,000 microwatts per meter squared at about uh, a foot and a half away. That number decreased to about three to 4,000 at about three feet away. We also tried Crystal's son's tablet, which Everett uses to play educational games and watch videos. In airplane mode, the tablet measured less than 100 microwatts but switch it out of airplane mode. So we're over 20,000 microwatts. Now it was time for the baby monitor. And if I set this where the head of the person would be, and this is the antenna right here, we're measuring two to three to 4,000 microwatts per meter squared. And at close range, the monitor's levels reach 100,000, double that of the Wi-Fi router. Your face, Crystal. Uh, like this, and I'm hearing the noise going louder and louder and louder. That's kind of, I, it's well. kind of scary to think about. I wasn't expecting that. The Federal Communications Commission allows for residential exposure up to 10 million microwatts per square meter. So, 100,000 microwatts should be no big deal, right? Federal Communications Commission says that these numbers are quite safe. In fact, this is many orders of magnitude less than what the FCC says is safe. But research is suggesting and showing otherwise. Miller compares the allowable numbers in the U.S. to recommended levels in other parts of the world. Belgium is 10 times lower than the U.S. Italy, Russia, China, Switzerland, Liechtenstein, Luxembourg are 100 times lower. Vienna is 1,000 times lower than the U.S. Salzburg province in Austria is... Um, uh, 10,000 times lower, and then the European Parliament is 100,000 times lower than the U.S. So these uh, health ministries are finding that people are coming in now to clinics with symptoms that are directly related to the use of these wireless technologies. Symptoms like headaches, ringing in the ears, numbness, tingling, difficulty learning, memory loss, and more. And that's why they're implementing these uh, programs to remove Wi-Fi from schools in Ireland, uh, France, Belgium, Switzerland, Austria, Germany, Israel, Russia, um, and Australia, and India. So what do these countries know that we don't know? That's, that's the question. For an objective perspective, with this patient, what I'm seeing here, we turn to naturopathic Dr. Brian Myers at the Livewell Clinic. 
And so it's really troubling, and, and it's, it's really difficult to know what to believe. Meyer says we're basically living in a Petri dish with this. What if we're, like, unintentionally hurting everybody, including the ones we loved? If there was, in fact, you know, reliable evidence to say that these things are damaging, or if you're just uncomfortable enough with the whole notion of it, then, you know, that would be another motivator for steering clear. Miller recommends... Uh, reduce use and increased distance. That may mean going back to corded telephones when you're at home and switching your devices to airplane mode or off when you're not using them, moving back the baby monitor or picking up an older wired version from a garage sale. SEPS Crystal Yokimka says she will consider now knowing the potential health risks. Knowing that 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 is so close to my babies, you know, both my babies, that's very frightening. For more information on the FCC's policy on safe exposure to EMFs, go to our website, cbslocal2.com, and click on the links we mentioned section.